Hello everyone and welcome to today's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a script template combo. Essentially what this means is that you have an After Effects project with several cool presets and you want to use a script to better customize these. You don't want to have to have the user dig into the project file, adjust the files manually to adjust the design. We want to have a script that will automatically dive deep into it and automatically change things for us. So today we're going to be integrating the script here into this lower third project file I have here. It's very straightforward and we have three different lower third subtitles using different fonts and animations and colors. So what we can do is use our script to select one of our presets. Let's say in this case we choose number two. And then we can choose what we want to change the title and subtitle text to. In this case, I'll just say hello there. Obviously, it's a lower third, so it's not usual to put this, but it's just an example. So now we can click on the Create button, and it's going to generate a new composition using that style, and it's going to use our text of hello there. So essentially, this script is relatively simple, but we're going to be going over a lot of concepts today that are scalable to larger projects and larger scripts. All right, so to get started, we're just going to launch Extend Script, and we'll be writing roughly 60 or 50 lines of code today. So we'll start a new JavaScript file, and the first step is to go ahead and create our UI. So first off, let's just create a window to put everything into. So I'll create a variable called main window and set this equal to a new window. And inside the parentheses, the first parameter, it's going to be a palette window. And the second parameter is going to be the name, which let's just do script templates. And then the third is, we'll just put undefined for the size and position. Then for all of the groups we're about to create, so we'll have a preset group, a title group, and a subtitle group. We want to have them go from top to bottom. Now in order to do that, we need to set our window to be orientated as a column, which will go from top to bottom. If it was a row, it would go from left to right. So we'll grab our main window and set the orientation equal to column. Now we want to create a group, like I said, for each of our sort of inputs here. The first one is for presets, where we're going to have preset text and this preset dropdown. So we'll start off, we'll just say preset group is equal to our main window. And on our main window, we're just going to add a group, undefined size and position, and we'll call it preset group. Now, same thing as we just previously did, we want to set the orientation so that we can specifically define which way the elements are going to be set. So we want everything to go from left to right. We need to set the orientation to row. So I'll grab my preset group and set the orientation to row. Now we can go ahead and start creating our elements. The first thing we're going to do is add this text here. Now, oftentimes in Extend Script for After Effects specifically, when creating UI, you might notice I usually don't create a variable for static text like this. But in this case, I want to be able to have control over the size of all of my elements. That way I can move them, make them larger or smaller, and line things up. For example, title and subtitle aren't the same length, but I've made their sizes the same so that our two text boxes here will line up as well. So we'll create a variable for our static text for preset text, and we're going to add this to our preset group, and we're adding some static text with undefined size, which we will call presets. Then, like I said, we want to set up a custom size. So I'll grab my preset text dot size, and we'll need to set this equal to a width and a height. For the width, let's just do 50 and height 20 or 25 should be good. Next up, we're going to need this drop down list. Now, there are two ways you can do this. Um, if you have a large template, you want to create a custom function that searches through and finds the compositions or files you need. What I mean by this is to, we would need to go through all of the items in our After Effects project and look for anything called lower third or that has lower third in the title. In my case, I only have three presets, so I'm just going to hand code them. But if you have a lot, I would recommend making a folder like, I don't know, preset comps, with all of your preset compositions. And then you can put them in there and easily search through for this pre comps folder and everything you know that's in here will be part of your project. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We're essentially going to hard code it just because we have a few presets. So we'll create a variable called preset dropdown. And we'll set this again equal to our preset group. 
and we're going to add a drop down list with undefined size. And for the parameters, we need to put in brackets. And we basically need to give it an array of values to display here. In this case, it just needs to be strings of text. So I'm going to just custom type this as lower third one, and that add a comma for the next one, lower third two, and lower third three. And I'll turn on word wrap here. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab our main window and center it, and then main window dot show. This is just so we can have a nice little view of what's going on here. I'll run this in extend script so it doesn't delete this preview we have here. So as you can see, we have our title and we have our presets and our dropdown. But you can see nothing is selected. So we need to specifically set the selection. So I'll grab my preset dropdown dot selection and set it equal to zero. And this will go ahead and select the first value by default. All right, so now we just need to move down and work on the title and subtitle groups. These are going to be very similar to each other. So we'll call one the title group. And we'll set this equal to our main window. And again, adding a group, undefined size, and we'll call it the title group. Then, just like before, we'll grab our current group and we'll set the orientation to row so everything goes from left to right. And then similarly to above, we're gonna wanna make a variable for our title text so we can custom set the size. So we'll say title text is equal to our title group. We're gonna add some static text to it and the static text is going to say title. Then I'll grab my title text variable and grab the size. And in this case, let's go a little bit bigger, maybe 80 pixels by 20 pixels. And now let's go ahead and add our edit text box where we can have user inputs. So for this, I'll just say title edit text and we'll set this equal to again, our title group dot add and we'll add some edit text. And you can put whatever you want in here. You could say name or first name and last name. Uh, I didn't want to put title because it would just say title, title. So I just went with first name. And then same thing, I want to go ahead and set the size for these as well because they are going to be a little bit different in size. So for this, I'm actually going to do, let's do 80, 20 for the edit text and then for any regular text, 50 by 20. One useful organizational tip I should mention, when I have a lot of groups to create and lots of elements, I like to use very specific naming conventions. So in this example, we have our main prefix here, which is title, which we're gonna use for everything. Title is sort of telling us which group this belongs to. So this is part of the title area. We're gonna make a group. Then we're gonna have in the title area some text. And then after that, we're gonna have in the title area some edit text. And this will just help you to avoid confusion in the future when you have large scripts. So now that we've done the title group, we just need to basically copy and paste this to make the subtitle group. Now obviously, copying and pasting this is going to produce the same exact group. So we need to change things up just a tiny bit. What I'm gonna do is select my entire second pasted title group here and click Control or Command F. This will bring up the find and replace or search feature. You can also go up to edit, find and replace. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is type in the word title. We wanna grab, we wanna find all the title instances and replace it with subtitle. But instead of searching through the entire document, we wanna search through just our current selection. And our current selection is this right here. So let's replace all. And it lets us know that 10 changes were made. And if, now if we look in our group here, we have subtitle group, subtitle group, subtitle text. We've changed everything. The only thing that it missed would be it lowercased this text here, so I'll fix that. So now if we go ahead and run it, we now have our two groups and they all have unique variables. Let's go ahead and change this to last name here. And lastly, let's create our button. So for our create button, I'm not gonna create its own button group because it's very simple and just one element. So what I'm gonna do is actually just add it to the main window. So I'll grab our main window and I'll add a button, undefined size, and we'll just say it's called create. So now the script UI is basically done, and now we can go forward and program it. So for any script, we need to have something that actuates all of our events. What is the user going to do that triggers it to create our lower third? 
Well, they need to click on the create button. So we need to grab our, we actually need to define the create button here. I don't know why I didn't do that, but we need to grab our create button and below where we show our window, we'll grab our create button and say on click is equal to a function. Anything we put inside of here is gonna happen when we, when we click on the create button. So if I say alert time to create, and I click on the create button, it's gonna tell me exactly the code inside of here. So let's go ahead and create all of our code here. The first thing we're gonna do is create a undo group. So I'll say app.begin undo group, and below that app.end undo group. What this means is any code we put between these lines here is going to be easily undoable. Anytime we execute this script, we can press control Z and it's going to undo this. And up here, we can also add a custom name in the begin part. We'll just call this lower third generation. And then once we run the script, we can easily click on edit and it will undo creating the lower third or lower third generation. All right, so now we can just go from top to bottom down the script and figure out what we need to do. The first thing is we need to figure out what preset we need to look for and thus create a composition for the user. So what we're gonna do is we need to grab what did they select on the dropdown. What we can do is use a switch statement and say if it was the, if they selected the very first thing, we know it's lower third one. If they selected the second thing, it's two. Or we can say grab their current selection and grab the text inside. So what I can do is alert preset dropdown selection and this is going to give us the actual text. But if I say selection.index, it'll give us the, well, index. So in this case, zero, one, and, and two. So we can either use just the numbers themselves from the selection or the selection text. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the selection text because I think that's easier. In the previous example, I had used the, the uh, index and just said, if it's zero, set it to lower third one. But I think it's better to scale it with this one to get the actual text. So first thing we'll do is define a new comp. So we need to tell the script that we're going to create a variable for the user's new comp. So we'll just call it the user comp and we'll set this equal to get preset comp. And inside of get preset comp, we're gonna to wanna to grab our preset dropdown dot selection. This is going to be a function we'll set up here in a second that's going to look through all of the items in our project and look for the preset name, in this case, lower third one. If it finds a comp with a name of that, then that's what we're looking for. And that's gonna be set to the user comp. But we don't wanna just grab the original one and edit it. We wanna duplicate it so we have a new copy and then edit it. So once we get our preset comp, this is going to return a composition. We want to say dot duplicate, and this is going to duplicate it. So now we can set up our get preset comp function. And the only argument we need is the name. And now what we'll do is we're just gonna loop through our entire project. So if our i is equal to one, i is less than or equal to our app.project.num items, and then we'll increment i by one. And what we'll say is if app.project.item i, the current item, if its name is equal to our name, and we also wanna check, is it a comp? So is app.project.item i an instance of a comp item? If both of these cases are true, if it matches the name that we selected and it's a composition, this is surely the preset we're looking for. So we're gonna wanna return app.project.item i. Hopefully that makes sense, a nice quick little function to get any composition you want. So now if we go ahead into our create button on click here, I want to alert our user comp.name just to see if we're getting it here. I'll run this. Let's select a uh, lower third one and click on create. 2000 years later. All right, so I've just spent a long time figuring out what the error was and it turns out I'm an idiot and JavaScript is a pain in the butt. So what happened was inside of our UI, our lower third says lower third one, lower third two, lower third three. What I forgot is that in our project file, it's lower third zero one, zero two, and zero three. We use this because we're assuming in the future we're gonna have more presets. So finally, we can grab our preset dropdown dot selection. 
So what we need to do is just go in and change our drop down values. And that was the easiest fix that took me 30 minutes of recording to figure out. So now if we get our user comp and after we gotten that value, we'll alert user comp dot name. Okay, let's run the script and look for lower third one. As you can see, we get lower third one. Awesome. Now we need to make sure we have on duplicate. And now we're going to grab our user comp and we want to set the name to something. So we'll just say lower third for user. And now let's go ahead and run it and just make sure everything's working relatively smoothly. Yep. So now we've created a lower third that's duplicated from lower third one. And now we just need to go into this composition, adjust some of the text. And for our purposes today, that's going to be everything. So below changing our user comp name, what we'll do is go ahead and change this title and subtitle text. What I'm going to do is just loop through uh, all of the layers in here. And if I find something called title, I'm going to change it to my title edit text. If I find a layer called subtitle, I'm going to change it to my subtitle text. So I'll say var i is equal to one for i is less than or equal to our user comp dot number of layers or num layers i plus plus. Then we're going to have two if statements, one for each of our texts. The first if statement is going to check if the user comp dot layer i or the current layer, if the name is equal to title, and then I'll just copy and paste that into the second if statement and change this to subtitle. Now again, be careful of naming conventions as we just had a problem with just adding a zero to the name of the file. Make sure as you can see here, we have all, all uppercase and all lowercase. Make sure you know exactly what you're looking for because that can cause a lot of headache. Now that we've identified whether or not this current layer is title or subtitle, we can now assume that it's a text layer. I'm going to assume that this has a source text property that I can click and go ahead and change all the text of. So inside of our title if statement here, I'm going to grab our user comp dot layer I and set the property called source text and say set value. And we're going to set this equal to our title edit text. So title edit text dot text. And then I'm going to copy and paste this into the subtitle section. And I'm just going to change title edit text to subtitle edit text. And like I said earlier, using really good naming conventions will make coding in the future a lot easier. So now let's go ahead and run the script and see if it's working. So this time I'm going to go ahead and use lower third number three here and make sure we run a fresh instance of the script, lower third three. And let's go ahead and just use my name here and click on create. And now if we open up this composition and go ahead and preview it really quick, you can see it's now updated the comp and our text. Now one last thing we need to do is open up the user comp by opening it in the viewer. And this is just a nice thing for the user that will automatically open it up for them. So let's go ahead and run it one last time here. Let's use lower third two this time. And we'll just say test text. And now it's gonna load up that comp for us, update the text, and we are off to the races. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's After Effects scripting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button for more videos and be sure to hit that little bell icon right next to it to be notified of new uploads coming out at noon MST every Monday and Thursday. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and make sure you guys have a wonderful day.